welcome to a special edition of Tudor Talk with me, Jack Cunningham, Jack Devonport, and our solid right back, Gus Scott Morris. How are you all doing, lads? Yeah, great, thank well. you. Yeah, How are so you? we're going to basically answer a few questions from fans and also just have a general chat with Gus after he's just signed his new contract to sign on for the season. So, Jack, do you want to get us cracking with the first question? Yeah, obviously you've, you've signed your new contract, it's all been announced. What was it that made you sort of want to commit to the season? Because obviously you've, the fans won't have seen it, but you're kind of a big part of the dressing room since coming in in sort of, what, January time? Yeah, no, to be fair, I, honest truth, when I left the club I was at for that little spell of a month or so, I've never really had a plan of actually moving, if that makes sense. I come in to help the team out for sure, but I, I love Drewson and I, I love the gaffer down there. I love different, everything about there. But one thing I... Give him it's a great opportunity. Um, and that's what kind of really sprung to mind. And we had a good couple of games and stuff like that. And I was doing okay and doing my job. And I started to really enjoy it and really enjoying the step up and the, and the new challenge it kind of come along. So that's what really kind of sprung to mind. And I've loved the new challenge for sure. And being out of a little bit of my comfort zone, never really never played in the league in the conference south. So going up a step higher. But yeah, and there's some good talented players down there, you know, and I think they haven't shown their full potential last season. Um, I think we let, each, let ourselves down a little bit, but it was certainly going in the right direction before, obviously, it all got, it all got stopped. Yeah, and how have you settled in with, with the team? Obviously, you've had sort of six months and you'll have a proper pre-season now because the fans won't have met you yet, but from knowing you as I do, you're quite a character. <laughs> I, know, to be fair, I can't, I can't wait to meet yeah <laughs> I can't <laughs> wait to meet the fans because as it shows we've, we've clearly missed them at home you know and I think yeah we've had a new surface to play on but without the Tudor Army our home record as it shows in the stats has been so poor and that's something we need to sort out and I'm sure I want to see the fans down there because I'm being a 12th man I'm sure it made the difference because away from home we seem to do it but at home, we have got a bit of a different mindset. So it'll be good to see the fans down there and uh, hopefully not giving me a load of stick. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, obviously the uh, season was stopped, wasn't it? And, you know, we all know what Hemel's view of that one to carry on. Yeah. For you, in terms of the season constantly stop, start, stop, start, how difficult was that actually to keep, I don't know, keep yourself fit, keep yourself motivated, keep yourself going for it? And also, I don't know, what were your feelings on it actually being ended the way it was ended? Yeah, and... Do you know what? It was very motivation. It was quite weird because obviously playing football and being in that team environment, you want to keep keep going and keep going and keep going and kind of get on that in that routine of play games, train, play games. It was so stop start, even over the Christmas period where teams were catching COVID and obviously like we had St Albans and obviously had to cancel and I can't remember another team. We had such a we, we kept having like two or three weeks off, and it's so hard to get any momentum or get on a run when it's like that. Um, for myself, I caught it myself, so I got COVID, and I know how much it affected me uh, as a player. And playing pre-COVID, when obviously, let's say, when I first signed and stuff like that, I was so much fitter, and then all of a sudden I got COVID, and it's funny what it can do to you. And I'm, I'm a fit young lad, and I was, spoke to the gaffer coming from St Albans City game, and I was like, after 65 minutes, I was done. Like, my, le my legs were done, and it's funny how a kind of virus like that can have such an effect on players. And I think when the gaffer got it himself and a few other players got it, I think that's when they started to realise and kind of go, actually, hang about. It is a lot more serious than what it kind of makes out on the news, especially when you're trying to play at a top level. Do you know what I mean? You're trying, but it's not a, you're not going down the, the park for a kickabout. You're playing at a good level of football and it requires a lot of recovery and then your muscles are getting worked hard. And, I couldn't believe how much it took it out of me. And to be fair, throughout the rest of the few games that we did play, I weren't the same player. I couldn't recover. So in a selfish way, I was kind of glad that it stopped in a selfish way. But in a in a collective, of course, I wanted to carry on because I think the reason behind it stopping, it weren't the right way. Do you know what I mean? It weren't because of COVID. They should have stopped. If it was because of COVID, they should have stopped it a long time before. It was all about money. And I think that's, that's slightly wrong for sure. Mm. Just speaking about your fitness that you mentioned there, uh, I got a question from one of the fans. And he says he seems to remember you see, seeing you play centre mid at one of your yeah, yeah, yeah. former clubs. And um, yeah, yeah, are you going to be asking Lee 
little run at him with, yeah, with, with, with Samir Samantha and Gus Scott Morris. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, to be fair, my old club, I used to, I like to think I could try and do a job anywhere I get asked to play. Um, I don't kind of say, oh, if I'm playing left back, right back, centre, I don't pick a bus up, I'm happy to play. But for my old club, I certainly did used to do a job in there and I played quite a few big games in centre mid. So <laughs> I can certainly play in there for sure, but I don't mind where I play, to be honest. As long as I'm starting and I can do a good job for the team, that's all that matters, really. Yeah, fair. I mean, uh, I think BJ has got a bit of an interest question on this. He says, um, was your recent tan real or not? <laughs> <laughs> See, is, is it real or is it a rental? See, now this is a little bit of jealousy of through the dressing room, okay? <laughs> I turned up. It was sunny. It, it, it was sunny for a couple of weeks. And I've turned up and I clearly all of them haven't got outdoors. And yeah, I got battered from my natural tan. It was natural. But apparently I, it looked like I was on the sunbeds. But I can confirm I've not been on the sunbeds. I've never had a sunbed. But yeah, I think that's a bit of jealousy, personally. <laughs> Especially... Especially Samir Carruthers. <laughs> Carruthers, yeah, he, he was so upset. I had a better time than him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> speaking of obviously coming in, coming into a new dressing room, how are you finding the staff up? Because obviously, I think you, you knew some of the players before you came in. So yeah, no. I'm, how, how are you finding I, the staff I, up? Yeah, to, to be fair, the dressing room welcomed me in really nicely. And to be fair, I, I felt at home ever since I kind of played my first game at Bath City. Um, I think sometimes it's good to have a bigger way journey and stuff like that because you spend good quality time with with players and especially on the coach when you win. I'm sure you saw the bus; it was absolutely rocking for two and a bit hours. Did you sing it in the show that day? I did. Yeah. Do we to sing it again? Yeah, go for it. I can't remember what I <laughs> What did I do? Um, I had a bit of Bruno Mars that I day. Think, I think a bit of Bruno. No, I think I, I went to the script. Bruno. I think the I went script. to script the man that can't be moved. I think the man that can't be moved. I think that's what I went <laughs> for. But Crowd I was a few beers down, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it, Crown <laughs> See, the, the, the star of the show was BJ that day. I'd never see that coming. Uncle BJ come out with an absolute belt. I think it's Rapper's Delight. And, um, no, yeah. I, 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 he was, Matty Bateman's Luther Van Dross. Oh, yeah, no, no. He, he, he did that. When I played with him last time, he dropped that as well on the coach, and he was very good at it. So I could imagine <laughs> yeah. that. But no, it's, it, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's good to be welcomed into a dressing room. And, you know, I've got on with players and obviously I knew Matt, I, I, I cash called with him uh, up at Royston. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm glad that we haven't seen the full potential of Matty Bateman because he's one hell of a player. Um, mm. And I think that's someone that hasn't benefited in a stop-start season because I tell you what, that kid can score goals. And I see him and he, he was scoring goals for fun. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can see a better Matt Bateman um, because he was at, he is one of the, one of the best strikers I've played with for sure. I do. Yeah. Speaking of uh, Royston, I've got a question. Someone asking, how was your time at your last club and uh, looking forward to the future? I guess what are your what are your aims? I guess in the long term, I suppose. Yeah, no, no, to be fair, the, the last club I, I owe a lot to um, the gaffer there. I know so well. I'm so close with him, and he gave me opportunity in football. Um, so I owe a lot to him, and it was a tough time leaving there because I have built up a lot of memories. I won a league title with him. I should have won another promotion with him if it weren't for COVID um, and stuff like that. We had a great FA Trophy run. It's a great club. Um, I can't speak any highly from the chairman all the way through to the gaffer and the players. It's a great club to be enrolled in, but sometimes you have to move on and sometimes it wasn't easy, easy leaving for sure. Um, but I can't speak any highly of the management, the chairman and the team down there because the boys and the togetherness when I was a 17-year-old lad coming into a dressing room, it's, it's an intimidating place. Um, but that's made me what I am today. So I'm very in debt to that club. And I've, I can't say a bad word about them, to be fair. It's a great club. And I'd recommend any player that are looking to play or trying to get an opportunity, for sure. They'll always look after you. So I couldn't say a bad word about Royce in a superb club. Well, there you go. Um, got another one. I don't know what they're trying to... Trying to um insinuate here but it's advice for players that find themselves on the bench obviously that's that's not you that's not that's not a bit at the moment it won't be at the moment but it can be uh, but but listen, do you know what the funny thing about being on the bench is you've got to try and make whatever uh, minutes you get you've got to then try and try and get that 
if it's 10 minutes, get that to be in 25 minutes. If it's 25 minutes, get it to a half. If it's a half, get it to a start. And it's hard. We've all been there. Do you know what I mean? We've all been on the bench. And it's never nice to be on the bench because you want to be out there playing. But I think I used to throw my toys out the pram with my assistant, my assistant <laughs> for last um, last club. And everybody used to get jobs. I used to throw my toys out the pram. I used to hate it. But it, it you have to be a mature attitude about it. And when you get your chance, you have to make sure you try and take it because it's so much harder getting in a team. It's easy to keep the shirt than it is to get one. So if you're ever on a bench, have a mature attitude and take whatever opportunity you get, make sure you try and take it. That's the advice I'd give. Yeah. So obviously when you and Cooper, et cetera, McDevitt all arrived, everything started to pick up and stuff. There were some brilliant results in there. What personally was your favourite win of, well, the season? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough one to be fair because... I think there was a few that I really enjoyed and I'm a bit weird in the sense I kind of enjoy the nitty gritty games and, mm. the, and the ones where sometimes you can not necessarily win 3-0 or something like that because yes, it's a great performance and everyone wants to win 3-0 but sometimes when you win a 1-0 or a 2-1 and you grind it out, I think that you can't put a price tag on that, especially when you can't bring a group together and it's quite a fresh group with new faces like myself, Cooper and, and um, Bevs and stuff like that. So I think that over that haven't or the Tunbridge game, I thought they both showed immense mm-hmm. character. And I mm-hmm. think, especially at Tunbridge, when I remember the last 10 minutes, I couldn't believe just looking looking behind me and I'm seeing Jake Howes in goal and I'm thinking, <laughs> oh no, Skip is <laughs> giving me a load of stick from in goal. I think I can't believe this. Um, but just that, when I just looked at that and I thought that shows real character um, as a group of men to try and have not have a goalkeeper, have eight outfield men. I think it was eight or I think it was eight outfield men um, and grind through that. And then you go back to the Haven't game and they ain't, they ain't a bad side, Haven't. They're a very good outfit and a very good budget and some very talented players down there. And to go away there and show a good arrogance to look like we're going to score every time we attacked, to then going down to 10 men after 10 minutes with Super Cooper uh, handballing it off the line, it just... <laughs> That for me was a that that's the longest half of football or eighty minutes of football I think I've ever played in my career. Like I, I could not believe. I kept asking the ref, "How long's left?" He'd be like, "Yeah, it's twenty five minutes." I'm thinking, "Oh my god!" <laughs> but it, it literally just went on for ages. But there to come out of them games with three points and not crumble under the immense pressure that was getting applied, I think that was that them that them two were certainly up there. Mm. And. Just a bit more of a light-hearted one as well, and this is a bit, this is a bit personal with me, me and you, a little bit of banter. Um, what hair products do you use? Because obviously every, oh. time pulled, every time I've pulled you for an interview for the past what two months, it's always not at a haircut. You, just <laughs> you, caught, shower. you caught me off. I can't believe it. you caught me off guard every time. You're pulling me after training. I'm thinking, oh, I, I think it was a match. There was a match where I didn't even know I was getting interviewed, and I didn't even draw my hair. I was like, this is not good. Nah, to be fair. I used to give it, give it the old big with the long hair, thinking I was David Beckham. But uh, I've matured up now. And I've, now I just use some magic powder. It goes in the top, throw it in there. Jobs are good. Good stuff. <laughs> is that what a good is that? Go. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, Question <laughs> advice for youth players trying to break through? Um, um, yeah, I think the thing is about being a youth player is it's the hardest step up in football is that 17 or whatever to 23, that age there. I've kind of just come out of that bracket. I'm still r- roughly young in that area, but you've got to be playing football. I think you've got to be going in an area where you're playing football because I, don't, I honestly do believe this, no matter what level you're playing at, as long as it's a sensible standard um, at a good level, I think... If you're playing well and you and you do well, you'll always get spotted and you'll always get word of mouth will get around that so and so's playing and, and doing well. And before you know it, you'll be jumping up the divisions, the, the divisions. Um so for me, it's always about playing and, and be be around people that you're trusted. Um I think sometimes there's a lot of people out there that can say a lot of stuff to you, but do they really care about you? And do they really are they have they got their needs? So your needs at best start, you know, and then have they are they going to look after you and help you progress as a player? Because if they're not, there's no point being around there. Do you know what I mean? There's no mm. point giving your all if someone isn't going to try and help you out. 
because that's what football's about sometimes. Sometimes it's about relationships, especially with coaches and managers. If they've got their, your best interests, if you're going to give it everything and play well, you're going to progress. Um, so that's my advice. I'd always say play at a, play the best level you can, but make sure you're playing. There's no point sitting, for me personally, there's no point sitting in a reserve team if you're if you want to try and play first team football, go and play it. That's and, and learn your trade because that that gap between 17 to 23 is such a big gap and a big stage in your football career. And obviously we speak about the fans. Hopefully yeah. they're gonna be they're gonna be back for pre-season, hopefully, and they're gonna be around next season. Obviously, they've not met you, so I thought we'd go with how would you describe Gus Scott Morris in three oh words. Oh my god. Three words. <laughs> <laughs> three words. I'll oh, give you five. I don't think I've ever spoken three words. Yeah. words. But well, I was gonna stand in all of that. The picture, I've not oh. met you yet, so. Um God, <laughs> cheeky, lippy, uh work hard. And a nutter. <laughs> 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 that's, that's all I've got. I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I've ever been asked to describe myself. Baller. Oh. I wouldn't call myself a baller. I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll leave that for Samir Carruthers. That's all I do. Just give it to him. Let him do so. <laughs> Who's the yeah, baller? Well, I mean, actually, to be fair, you mentioned Samir Carruthers. Obviously, he signed on for next season as well, as was Sam Manson, but he can't wait to continue playing with them because it seemed like towards the end of the season there was a really good squad coming together and it feels like we've built the, the base of another one for this season as well. Yeah, look, they're quality players and to get them wrapped up is massive because Sam Manson uh, Sam Man and Sam, Sam, Samir Carruthers, at the end of the day, they have played in the league, do you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. that's where hopefully a lot of us that I played for him or are looking to try and push into, do you know what I mean? Or, or push on and try and get into that. Um, you know, uh, Samir Karamas, I'll take the mick out of him because no one's allowed to touch him in training so he don't get injured. He hates that when I keep saying that. But G Gaffer starts having a heart attack when I go around him. And I sit, start seeing Carl go around him. You're not allowed to touch him. Um, but they're different class, mate. They're a level of love. And to get them wrapped up, and I think Samir was starting to show his quality. Um, you know, coming that kind of back period, he was, even in the friendly, he was, he was banging them in for fun. And to get them wrapped up and there for the start of the season, I think it's massive because they're quality. You know, that, that's quality that mm. even the teams that are in around us don't have. Um, I think every, they, them two get into every team in the conference south and easy and they walk in. So it's great to have them and especially in the round of dressing room because it brings great experience. And I think that they were when I joined kind of in, I can't remember November or whatever time I did join we were lacking experience in that dressing room at, at a certain level and not only have they may have not played at this level but they bring valid experience for the younger lads to kind of feed off and have a car med sometimes mm. and sort of speaking about next season just one to finish on what sort of the what's the, what's the aims what's the goals for, for you and the club Going into next season. Uh, so, so, sorry, is that the well. next season? Yeah, next yeah, season. Yeah, for next season. Also, we, we finished strong. We're sort of building a bit of a squad. You've put some good performances yeah. in as well. So what sort of, how, what do you want to build on next year? I just think we need to get more together as a squad. Um, I think the talent isn't an issue. Um, I think there's some talented players. I think JJ Lacey is a, has a great talent. And I think he goes under the radar uh, for how quiet he is as a lad. He, he goes under the radar because that plan and behind him he's a joy to have because he, he rarely ever gives it away and more often than not he, has, he does a lot with the football um, mm. but as a squad we, we one thing I would say we've got to improve our home record we, if we've got any ambitions of doing what we need to do and I think I know the chairman and stuff like that wants to push for playoffs this year um, and he's expressed that but if we're going to do anything we need that home record improved because that ain't good enough and um, there's no beating around the bush for that that's not good enough and I'm sure that the Tudor army won't settle for that um, and I'm sure we need them around to, to cheer us on because at the end of the day there's nothing like playing in front of your home crowd when they when they get going so for us as a squad I, think, I don't think the talent's questionable but we've got to get together and really try and push on and if the chairman the gap will play us we really got to buck our ideas up and um, really push on. 
Well, I think that's a nice way to end it. So thanks for joining us, Gus. Thanks for joining us as well, Jack. And uh, we'll be seeing no you for the first pre-season friendly. And uh, we'll see the Tudor Army yeah, later as thank well. Thank you.